Sculpture unveiled Earl Weaver. It is his day here at Camden Yards, and we are just so delighted that he joins us here in the booth. Earl, it was a great ceremony. Congratulations. I loved it, naturally. That's what matters. <laughs> yeah. You, you look good. like you really enjoyed it. <clears throat> well, I did. Uh, you know, there's not enough words in my vocabulary to, to really express how you feel with something like that. <clears throat> it, uh, it, I've known about it for a long time, but yet when you see it, uh, it still hasn't sunk in. Yeah. I'm going to have to come back sometime and see the statue because they didn't give, give me time really to, <laughs> to look and see what it looked like. <laughs> Here's Lou Marson. You have you've already got the line of the day, maybe the year, when you said they made me look like Buck. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and I think Buck was honored by that. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe he was insulted. We don't know. No, I, I know. <laughs> I heard you talking about evaluation of players you were you were thanking all the people who've done that for you you yourself though knew how to evaluate a baseball player what were you looking for in a player to be your guy well I think not that you look for anything everybody can't be Frank Brooks yep. you know everybody every pitcher can't be Jim Palmer but there's a little bit of something in them that makes him right at the edge of being a big league ball player. Now, through 20 years in the minor leagues, the first 10 as a player, watching people pass me up and get to the big leagues and saying to myself, what have they got that I don't have? Well, they had a better arm. They could run faster. They hit the ball further. You know, yeah, yeah. there weren't many better fielders, though. But at any rate, uh, you start judging. And then it was your job to judge talent and, re and send in, as a minor league manager, yeah. to send in reports to the front office. And what it just turned out that I feel I really had good baseball judgment. And when I turned in a prospect report or turned in a report that said this guy will never get to the big leagues, I feel I had a lot of success. And I guess the fellow that hired me, Harry Dalton, he was reading those reports all through the years as a minor league manager and gave me a chance. Harry Dalton is a name you keep repeating over and over. I mean, he made a huge difference in your life, didn't he? Oh, he definitely did. Uh, Jim McLaughlin was the guy that hired me first as a minor league manager, and I owe him almost everything. Well, not almost everything, but a lot for giving me a chance. And then Harry at that time was the assistant farm director under McLaughlin. And we grew up through the minor leagues to get, well, Harry grew up through the front office. I grew up through the minor leagues. And Harry Dalton was definitely responsible for me getting a major league job. You, I, you know, I always knew that you had some good minor league years. When did you really know that 100 runs, scored 100 runs, drove in 102 runs, things like that. When did you really know? I know it was age 26, but what prompted you to think well, about managing? Well, I worked my way up at a Cardinal roster to the big leagues. That took four years. The next six were working my way down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Because I know when, Cal, you know, Cal Ripken Sr. And when I got yeah. back to A-ball, I thought, what is this? Oh, well. <laughs> and I really, uh-oh. Avery's going to go back into the corner. It is hit hard, and goodbye home run. Do you think, uh, we talked about, uh, you talked about the numbers. You started using numbers, comparisons, looking pitcher, hitter, all that sort of thing, where guys hit balls. Would you have gone to the shifts that we see used in the game now? I don't remember anybody that we really had to do it against. That, of course, you got to ask Mr. Brain here because he's got, That's Mr. Palmer. He, he's got the memory and tell me what I should have done. <laughs> Who should we have uh, turned over to? No, we had DeWalt. We had charts. We had, we had oh, straight we, charts. Yeah. Well, we, we had never big extremely. Yeah. Over the winter, uh, we'd go over and knew like Sal Bando with uh, Oakland. We knew every hit he got against us. The pitchers, my pitchers took the charts. Yeah. And we went over him in the winter, and we knew exactly where he was going to hit the ball or how we had to adjust. One year we pitched him inside, one year we pitched him out of side. He adjusted with us sometimes, yeah. and we had to adjust again. But uh, we'd have a pretty good idea. 
well, let me say this. All those 20-game winners we had, when any one of them, young guy, McGregor, Flanagan, come up out of the big leagues, uh, I did a great job with them because I told them, see that 22 <laughs> out there? Do everything he does and listen to him and try to stay up with them if you can. And they did. They tried. And they listened, and they tried to stay up with him. Well, that was the ultimate compliment. Now, of course, yeah. you didn't tell you me. Didn't tell that, that you didn't tell me until last year at Cooperstown. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, you knew it. <laughs> As Drupal Cabrera is swinging and a miss. Earl, we are just so happy your day is here. How much you uh, obviously are enjoying it, and we are so honored to have you with us. Thank you very much.